Now, how many of you understand the power of the preached word? There's no greater power than the preached word of God. Because faith comes by hearing. So your faith is getting created because I'm preaching. And you hear me today? And without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I, I, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Really, today is very important. Now, I want to start it off with five things I'm going to say, and then I'm going to write to the Word. And I'm going to preach on this for a couple of weeks here. I feel like this is a little series of something. I feel like I can help build something. And how many of you know that if you don't love the Lord, you need to get saved? If you don't love his word, you're not saved. Hello? Amen. You don't love his word, you're not saved. It's a trick, saints. And I'm not a trickster. If you don't love God's word, you don't love him because his word is him. Yes. He honors his word above his name. Hello. That's pretty heavy when there's power in his name. But he puts his word above his name. Heaven and earth can pass away, but not his word. His word will remain Amen. now here's five things that I want to say and Angela put these on uh, uh, I'm going to give them to you so you can put them up first one's Acts 13 verse 1 through 4 just write it down okay don't go on a tailspin don't panic just write it down Acts 13 1 and 4 second Psalm 139 Verse 1 and 2, 1 John 1, 7 through 9, okay? The third one is Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. If you, re, if you forget these, I'll help you. Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. The fourth one, Hebrews 11, 1. And the fifth one, Isaiah 50, verse 4 and 5. And Revelation 2, 11 and 17. Revelation 2, 11 and 17. Now, there's a child in the back that has some kind of light, like a laser. I need that light cut off and not to come back on again. Do you understand? I'm pointing right there. That light better not come on again. Now, here, here's the thing. I want you to get Acts 13. Put it on the board. How many of you know that if a laser can cause pilots to lose control of the plane, a laser can damage your eyes for life? Do you understand that? So if you think I'm rough on that, then let me get a laser and help you see how quickly you can lose your sight. Okay? So don't even go there. Acts 13. And verse 1, here's the first thing I want to say, and I'm going to pray over you today. Okay? Now, in the church assembly at Antioch, there were prophets, inspired interpreters of the will and purpose of God, and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who were called Niger, Black, Lurkius of, okay, don't change, okay, of Serene, now change, uh, Manin, a member of the court of Herod, the Tectric, and Saul. Now, go on. I want to read a little more. Verse 2. And while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Separate now for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Verse 3. And then after fasting and praying, they put their hands on them and sent them away. Verse 4. And so then being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia. And from that port, they sailed away to Cyprus. Okay. Now, understand. I don't want to go to verse 5. Okay. First thing that I want to say to you is this. These are five things that God wants functioning 
on a regular basis in our life and wants to have it established in this church. Five things. Prayer must be in this house. Pray with me right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray over this body and I declare what your word says, that, Lord, uh, that your church would be a praying church. And, Lord, I thank you that, God, you're teaching us and you want to teach us even more the value of prayer. The prayer, the righteous prayer, is a valued prayer. The prayer of the righteous avails much. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now that the saints of God will begin to hunger for prayer in their lives. In Jesus' name. And those of you that like to sit and gulk, do me a favor. If you don't mind, close your eyes and look at the floor, if nothing else, because it's a very bad distraction. Okay? If you don't want to pray, that's fine. Just look at the floor. The second thing is this, Psalm 139. Second, uh, I mean Psalm 139, verse 1 and 2. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, O Lord, you have searched me thoroughly and have known me. And you know my downsettings and my uprisings. You understand my thought afar off. How do you hear that? How do you know God knows you? God knows everything about you. 1 John, 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Look at that one. This is in sequence to that. 1 John 1 and verse 7. <clears throat> but if we really are living and walking in the light as he himself is in the light, we have true unbroken fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us, removes us from all sin and guilt, keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. And if we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we're sinners, we delude and lead ourselves astray for the truth which the gospel presents is not in us, does not dwell in our hearts. Come on. If we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just and true to his own nature and promises and will forgive our sins, dismiss, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Everything not in conformity to his will and purpose, thought, and action. How do you hear that? Now, I want you to pray with me again. This is the second area. How do you know in this church there has to be, and there always has been, prayer. And there's second thing, there's always been a deep, deep cry of repentance and confessing of sin and a cleansing that God can do. Can you hear that? That's what makes his church powerful is when God's people will humble themselves and pray and seek his face, God will heal them. Can you hear me today? So I want you to pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, we declare right now that, Lord, if we confess our faults, you know our faults because you told David you knew all those areas in his life's shortcomings. So, Lord, we don't play games with you. We come boldly before you, transparent before you, and we declare that, Lord, you see those things hidden in our hearts. You see those things hidden in our lives. Uh, and right now we confess and we admit and we say, Lord, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Do you get that? The third thing. Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. Psalm 130, verse 5 and 6. Now, I wait for the Lord. I expectantly wait. And in his word do I hope. That's it right there, number one. But we're going to go further. But number one, in this one, you're going to say with me that our hope is in this word. I'm not trusting in what the politicians are saying. I'm not trusting in what the economists are saying. I'm trusting in the Word. Can you hear that? I put my life in front of the Word. Now, go on to verse 6. I'm looking and waiting for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning. I say more than watchmen for the morning. How many of you know he's saying, I am waiting for the Lord. I have a discipline of the word and a discipline of waiting on the Lord. Will you pray with me now? Father, in Jesus' name, I pray over this body that, God, there would be a fresh anointing of a discipline of the word. 
Lord, let your people stop despising uh, the word, being distracted uh, from the word, uh, but fall in love with the word. And may the word be a light under their path. Uh, may it become the very hope of their hearts. In Jesus' name, may the word be alive. And may we discipline ourselves uh, to wait on you, God, uh, to spend time waiting on the Lord. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things give thanks, for it is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Learn that waiting on the Lord is powerful. Father, we thank you. We've gotten to this stage in our life that we want to renew these vows we want to renew these covenants with you that lord prayer and confessing of sins uh, and discipline of the word and of waiting on you have become a part of rock church's history may it be in the life of the millennials and the life of those in this house may it be a part of their life number four hebrews 11 1 you say, well, what are you doing, Pastor? I'm doing a deliberate act here. I'm deliberately doing an act of faith here today. For you that have no idea what God's doing, and you criticize what God's doing, may your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. May your tongue cleave to the roof of your mouth. And the next time you put your mouth on what God is doing, may you not be able to speak until you repent now you can ask this church that's been here a long time man walked in this house came up threatening me won't kill me and I simply pointed my finger at him and said your tongue will freeze to the roof of your mouth he didn't speak for one hour until I went over and prayed for him and then God loosed his tongue so he could talk how many of you are listening today I'm not here to play church, saints. I'm getting ready to go to a conference this week. I have another one coming up. I have about four in a row that I have to be at. And I'll be gone a couple days this week, a couple days next week, and just constant. Now, in that process, I'm going in, and these are leaders coming together. These are not, these are not open to the public. These are the, some of the largest, most powerful leaders in the body of Christ. And God is talking to us, telling us to come together. We were just in one in Atlanta. We got another one down in Florida. We got another one in Dallas and another one in Dallas. And God's assembling uh, his eagles. He's assembling the eagles, not the buzzards, for the buzzards eat dead stuff. But God's assembling the eagles so that they can eat that which is alive in Christ. And because I'm in those meetings, I'm always asked to be one of the speakers. And because of that, I go there with a different attitude. And I'm not there to entertain people. The church needs to come back and revisit some ancient uh, 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 truths uh, and foundations. And we need to put our eyes on the horizon and see there's more to come. But we need to revisit those ancient things and redig those wells and redig those foundations and say, Lord, make the church strong. Yeah. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation of the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we, us, do not see. And the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact, what is not revealed to the senses. Have you know, there needs to be in this church, and there's always been in this church, faith and expectation. This church got here without most of you. And what happens is, many that are here today have been here, Gary's been here forever. Mel was here. He flew away. <laughs> but Mary Jane and Mel, they've been here forever. There's people that have been here forever. And then there's people that are new. And my responsibility is to make sure that those of you that are new don't get a wrong doctrinal opinion of the plan that God has for this house. I'm a vision caster 
and I'm casting the vision of this house. We got here. We built the other buildings on the other hill, the big school we had, and all those things. We built them, and I'll explain that as we move forward here. But we built those things, and we created those things, and God has blessed this church where we've done things all over the nations, the world, this city, and in between. Because we are people of faith. Not faith uh, that some kind of televised uh, thing that's put on when you need to see a moment's expectation of excitement, but faith that lives in the core of people's lives that every day they get up with faith and they believe God and they trust God and they know God will. Amen. How many of you hear that? Amen. This church got here, you're sitting in the faith that I have and you're sitting in the faith of those that have invested in making sure this house would be here. So that another generation coming will be able to say, this is the house that God built. Except the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. And this house is built on faith. That's why we believe for miracles. That's why we believe for healing. That's why we see healings, because we believe God's promises. That's why we believe that we can build houses and give them away in the middle of recession, because God has given us faith. And some of you that have faith and you've allowed it to, to trinkle down, I'm reminding you of what I said at the offering. It's time to go up and time to go in. you got to get your faith to the place where it needs to be. You got to begin to practice it. You got to begin to act like you have faith. You got to begin to trust God in your faith. You got to begin to declare, this is what the Lord wants to do. And I know He will come through for me. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Yeah. I haven't started preaching yet. That don't mean I'm going to be long, I just haven't started. <laughs> Prayer, confessing and repenting and cleansing. Discipline in the word and discipline on waiting on God and faith and expectation. I expect God to show up. I come here to preach expecting God to show up. Can you hear me? I told you last week to bring your oil. Right? And how many know it was a powerful service? I didn't come... Doubting that, I came expecting that. The fifth thing is this, Isaiah 50, verse 4 and 5. And the Lord God has opened, uh, uh, okay. The servant of God says, the Lord God has given me the tongue of a disciple uh, and, and of one who is taught that I should know how uh, to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as a disciple, as one who is taught. Come on, verse 5. The Lord has opened my ear, and I have been rebellious. I have not been rebellious or turned backward. How many of you hear that? One of the keys right now is God has always caused this church to have an open ear to the prophetic word of God. Eric Butler will be here this November for our conference along with uh, John Tort uh, Testola. And he'll be here. It's going to be a great conference. And some of our sons are coming in and they're coming in for prayer. We have a, a new pastor and his wife coming in uh, at September at the uh, Labor Day uh, service on Sunday. For us to lay hands on him and his whole team. He's planting a new church. And he wanted to come here and get prayer from this church. How many you know that God has given this church and given us the ability to hear the word of the Lord? We have moved at the right time. We have moved into the right thing because we've heard God. Come on. Are you listening to me? So this church has had an open ear, Revelation 2, 11 and 17. He who is able to hear, let him listen to and heed to what the Spirit says to the assemblies, churches. He who overcomes is victorious, shall no way be injured by the second death. 
Then to the angel, messenger of the assembly of the church in Pergurum, uh, Pergurum uh, there were the words of him who has and welds the sharp two-edged sword. Go to verse 17. 17. He who is able to hear, let him listen to and heed what the Spirit says to the assembly churches. To him who overcomes and conquers, I will give him to eat of the manna that is hidden and will give him a white stone with a new name engraved on the stone which no one knows or understands except he who receives it. I would say, Lord, give me an ear to hear. Can you hear that today? Now I want you to put your hands over your ears. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare right now that your people uh, will he be healed today of deafness. Lord, I rebuke the spirit of, of deafness and muteness over the people of God uh, that they will today begin to hear like never before. They'll hear the word of the Lord. Now open your hands. Now, Lord, I pray right now healing comes into those ears that they'll hear. The Bible says you hear the sh voice of the shepherd because you know him. May you hear my voice. May you hear the voice of God. May you hear the voice of authority. May you hear the voice of Jehovah. May you not hear the voice of Satan. May you not hear the voice of fear. May you not hear the voice uh, of doubt and unbelief. May those voices be silent. May you not hear the voice of confusion and double-mindedness. But may you hear joy and peace and righteousness and hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? You'll hear the word of the Lord. Now, I set you up. Recently, I preached several messages. One uh, I preached was truth decay. You remember that? Yeah. Another was, follow me. Not me, him. And last week I preached about a need for refreshing. Yeah. Have you got that? Yeah. And currently, uh, I, 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 I alluded to this a minute ago, currently I've been asked to speak at several key conferences where there's a gathering of the eagles because it's time for God's leaders to come together and reason with one another. And we're discussing things that are of high level Doctrinal issues are being dealt with. We're looking at and studying. We have scholars coming in our midst. We have those kinds of people that break down these things, that have PhDs and those that study and those that have experience are coming. People that have been in the move of God for 50, 60, 70 years are going to be there. And then young millennials are going to be there. Young men and young women that are set on the course of turning uh, this nation around for the glory of God. In business and in law and all kinds of places. And building churches that are growing by just an uh, absolute storm. We're coming together so that we can sharpen our axes for the day that's ahead. Can you hear me today? We're talking about some of the foolishness that's preached. And we're going to deal with it. We're going to talk about some of those things. We're talking about the void of the power of God in the church. Amen. It's a shame that God's church that was birthed with power has become so powerless. Hello. Now, in the gathering of these leaders, we're coming together to sharpen our swords. And there are many key subjects, and I mentioned that. Now, there's one subject that has really stood out for me. And I want to try and expand on it for the next few weeks. And God willing, I'm going to do that. Here's what that word is. So I'm not going to try to finish today. I'm just going to try to baptize you in it. Okay? I'm going to try to get you baptized in this word here. Can you hear me today? Yes. Now, the word is this. Corporate gathering. You can write it down. Corporate gathering. Now, there's another word that is a secular word that I don't use, and I'm going to push against it today. And that is the word community. When you hear that word, it has connotations. It has this sense of 
Wow, unity coming together. It's not. How do you hear that? The difference is going to be clear. I'm going to give you a Hebrew and Webster's Dictionary difference so that you can get your subject matter straight. What I call the church that's emerging, the apostolic church that's emerging, that means driven by apostles and prophets because the scripture says the church foundation is built on the apostles and the prophets. Jesus is the cornerstone. Now, it does not say it's run by boards. That's not biblical. Hello? It's not a denomination. Many of those denominations have turned into abominations. Now, the corporate gathering is what I call it. And let me say, that secular word that I was talking about, that gathering, is the word community. And the Greek word, kononia, covers both of these words. So we see kononia, it is fellowship. When people talk about community, they talk about it as a description of what the church is not what the church does. There is a difference between what the church is and what the church does. Have you hear that? The church is a corporate gathering facility, place. It is a corporate body. Now the reason that I come up against that word is because the word community is used by the secular world and it's being used by humanists and it's being used to contaminate the church. Why? Because that word community is defined as isolation, separatist, and segregation. Those three words define that word community. When you say, I belong to a community, how many of you know we have communities today that are called gated communities? right hey look at me that means you and me can't go in there come on when it says gated community it really says everybody but you when you start using the terminology of community you have just set it aside as this isolated separatist segregated group that won't inclus be inclusive to others and how do you know the kingdom of God is inclusive? God so loved the world. So when you see corporate, it means to cooperate with. It means a lot of things. I'll give you more definition in a minute. But it's broader. It's inclusive. How do you know the church cannot become a community? Because then we'll have a white church. A black church, a Spanish church, we'll have an Asian church, and we'll be back where we were 25, 35, and 40 years ago. We'll be this thing called the church that is in separatisms and isolation, and we build our little walls and our conclaves, and we come inside of them on Sunday, and we yell and scream at the devil, and we go out on Monday and hide. How many of you know this house is not about community? It's about kononia. Fellowship, love, that's why we have this dinner. But our purpose and who we are, we're a corporate body. Can you hear that? How many of you know you just have to look around and see that this ain't a community? We just built a house down in the city. Right? And how do you know that particular area of the city is a community? And they have a community center. And they have a community group. Right? Now, do you know that if I moved in there? Come on. Do you know the reverse is true? There are places... Downtown, there's places, you know, in all these new high-rises. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
And all of a sudden, the church said, we like that word. No, the humanist, demonic spirits that have infiltrated into the speaking and doctrine of the church put a word in there that sounds good, and we took it. And how many of you know that's why this church is so unique is because it ain't white, it ain't black, it ain't yellow, it ain't tan, it ain't in between. Do you understand that? And how many of you know it ain't wealthy, it ain't poor, it ain't in between. It's both. Do you understand this? And the minute we go and call ourselves a community, I want you to remember it's gated. Do you know years ago somebody said to me, because we had some uh, people coming up here when we first started on the other hill over there, and there were young people coming up, and they'd park their cars at night, and they'd kiss and love and do all kinds of crazy stuff. And somebody said, why don't you put up a gate? I almost flew off the table. And I said, a gate? What spirit is that? There's not going to be a gate here. Because a gate says, stay out, only us. How of you know, this church has always said, whosoever. Drunks come in with booze on them. I mean booze, drunk. The number one wino in all of Baltimore came in this church. How do I know that? Because the police came behind him. <laughs> came in this church. I laid hands on him. He had throw up all over him. Had a bottle. He had just drank a big swig of it and broke it against the cement. Came in and sat down. Boy, the saints, they were parting the sea. And when the altar call came, he walked down. And he came down, and I laid hands on him. I'll never forget, I put my hand on his forehead. When I did, he hit the floor on his butt, landed right on his butt. Boom. And he was completely sober. And he said, he looked up with big eyes, and the person standing there, one of the, one of the guys was counseling, and he looked up and said, what in the hell did he do to me? <laughs> now, some of that hadn't gotten sanctified yet. We were still working with him. <laughs> we got him up, and he said, I haven't been sober in so many years. I can't. He's the largest dairy farm owner in the state of Pennsylvania. He was. He was a fighter pilot. Had a history of unbelievable. Lost everything. I hired him. Gave him a job as a janitor. I got a dentist to give him false teeth because he had no teeth. And two years later, living in one of the ladies' houses here at the church, he died. Died in his bed, cirrhosis of the liver. But in that season, God brought healing to him. Because we're a corporate church, not a community that isolates us from anybody. Gay can come and in between. Muslims have sat all across the front row in this service. With their garb on. One lady came in and she was a Buddhist. Doctor big time in Hong Kong. Sat right there. She broke her shoulder just before she graduated. And her way home she stopped here. Because one of the people that brought her, brought her here and had me lay hands on her. I touched her. I didn't know that she had a bad shoulder. They just said she needed prayer. She didn't have a sling. She didn't have any of that. I touched her. When I did, she yelled. I, I thought, what in the world? They said, she has a bad shoulder. You probably hurt her. She threw her hands up. She said, oh, my, what happened? And God healed her. She went home to Hong Kong, started attending a church, gave her life to Jesus, and got out of being a Buddhist. Why? Because whosoever... Can you hear me today? And that's what this church is. And this church will never, as long as I'm here, lose that because that's what makes us a corporate gathering body. Can you give the Lord praise? Now, let's go a little deeper. We're going in deeper now. We've gone up some. We're going deeper. 
When the word corporate, where the word corporate is more of a kingdom term and is inclusive, the whosoever, religion uses community, kingdom uses corporate. Can you hear that? Left alone, everything in nature degenerates. I mean, hear me. Left alone, everything in nature degenerates. What do I mean? I'm still on target. Just listen. Freshly cut flowers that are stunning and, and they're beautiful become wilted and brown in a short period. Isn't that true? Everything in nature, <laughs> you, degenerates. Galatians said, my outward man is perishing every day, yet my inward man is renewed Come on. How many of you know you got up this morning older than you were yesterday? There's another wrinkle that you didn't realize. There's a freckle that showed up. All of a sudden, you're realizing the mirror, mirror, who on the wall? Why are you yelling at me now? Some of you are going, oh, not me, man, not me. Your day. See, you can lie to that mirror as long as you want. And then one day, you get up there and look at it and you go, where did that come from? Because it's a degenerating process. Acts 20, verse 28. Paul exhorts the overseers to care for all the flock. Paul said he wants the overseers to care for all the flock. A flock speaks of all the sheep together as one body, the whole, but composed of individual sheep. Now, at times in life, Family, work, and church in some areas around us are doing well and some are not because the law of degeneration is at work. How many of you know sometimes in your family things are going well and sometimes they're not? Sometimes in your job is going well and sometimes it's not. And sometimes in the church there's good going on and then sometimes it's not. Because degeneration is going on constantly. Have you know God will let some things die so that other things can come alive? Are you still following me? I'm talking about the corporate gathering body of Christ. God will let some things die. Do you know God will let some people pass off the scene? So that others can step up. Oh boy. Now, Jeremiah 2, 21. He said, Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then are thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? That's New King James. New King James says it. As you've turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me. How do you hear that? God said, I planted you, Rock Church. I planted you as a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then are thou turned into a degenerate plant of a strange vine to me? How do you know those points I read to you, those five things? When we walk away from those, we begin to degenerate because it's vision that gives us life. Can you hear me? Vision keeps us alive. And history reminds us of the vision. And this generation today has no understanding of history. The only thing you want is now, today, current. But if you don't know where we've come from, you'll abuse where you're going. Now, there's a stage of growth in the local church where truths are planted. As time passes, as time passes, the original planting can produce a noble vine, like it said in Jeremiah. And it speaks of it, or it can become a strange vine if we're not careful. How do you know a noble vine means that it was a healthy, fruit-bearing vine? 
But if we're not careful, we're all called to be caretakers, vine dressers. Adam, what's the first thing God did? Gave him a job. What was the job? Who can tell me what Adam's first job was? Tend to the garden. He was a vine dresser. He was a husbandman. Can you hear that? Adam was a husbandman. He was ordered to take care of the vine. Turn around. Look over to your left and right. Are you taking care of the vine? Wow. That's why we have zones. That's why we do zone work because we pull people together so that other people are looking out for other people. Can you hear that? Wow. Now look at this. A plant will generate or a plant will degenerate. How many of you want to? I got hot peppers. I didn't realize till recently. They come back every year. Oh, I love them. I have all kinds of hot peppers. I have habaneros. I have Tabasco little things. And I have uh, probably hundreds, probably two, three hundred of them growing. And I have these peppers about that long. They're called Texas uh, cow horn. Longest pepper you ever seen. I mean, they're eight, nine, ten inches long. And I got peppers that will make your hair stand up. Some that will make you speak in Spanish. <laughs> to me, you know, like when I eat, somebody says, oh, you like jalapenos. They're like pickles. Yeah. I can eat them just, you know, like pickles. They're just like pickles. Mary Jane's the only one I know. She, can, she eats it in the morning for breakfast. She can eat hot food. Why am I saying that? Because there are plants that reek. What do we call those plants when they come back every year? Perennials. Perennials. They come back. How many of you know that we're supposed to be plants that come back? reproduce every year we get pruned a little bit in church we get trimmed up a little bit but we're supposed to multiply and come back again and you know what the plant that you prune and work on gets hotter it gets healthier my tomatoes this year we have had oh my god we have buckets we don't even know what to do with them i've been giving away like crazy i mean we could open up a stand my tomatoes have been blessed of God. And they are so good. Right, Cheeky? Yeah, he's back. Yeah, he, hallelujah. And he usually can't hear very well, but he heard that, boy. He got <laughs> talked to his tummy and he got that. Do you understand? Something that gets pruned comes back healthier. And we are supposed to be not degenerating but regenerating can you hear me we ought to be multiplying increasing multiplying others there ought to be a sense uh, that when the hummingbird of the holy spirit comes near us uh, it pollinates uh, other plants uh, with the great thing that god's doing in your life you ought to be so contagious that when you get around people they pick it up i grew Hot peppers and radishes together. Dumb move. Because my hot peppers pollinated my radishes. And I was handing radishes to people and they were crying. Ah! And I was going, what is wrong? I sliced, ate one and went, oh, I see. Because the hot pepper had jumped over and had marinated. Come on. Don't you know that that's what you and I are supposed to do? We're supposed to, we're supposed to not degenerate. We're supposed to regenerate. We're supposed to be multiplying ourselves. Has God been good to you? Yeah. If God's been good to you, say so. Yeah. If God's been good to you, tell somebody right now, God's been good to me. When you spit on them, you're pollinating them. When you spit on them, you're causing the goodness of God to regenerate from you to them. Do you know what happens on Sunday? I come in here and I pollinate you. That's what's going on. I'm pollinating you with faith. Come on. Let's go a little further now. You still with me? Now we teach truth. And if we 
as we teach through and plant the right seed, energy and emphasis and, and prayer and teaching is used in the sowing process so the seed becomes healthy. And despite the cost, we must energetically maintain the truth or it will decay. Truth decay. You see, saints, you have to keep the truth alive. That's why this church is here. This church has is, is survived. This church has gone through all the wars and all the problems and all the things that any church life would be. But this church has survived. Why? Because this has got a good seed in it. Amen. And yes, it prunes. And yes, we prune. And when we do, it keeps growing. It keeps coming back healthier and stronger. Our greatest day is in front of us. Yeah. But you got to understand, if you stop pollinating, then the vine is going to start degenerating. And some of you are so selfish, you're only interested in you and your little world. And you pollinate nothing and everything around you becomes death. There's some people, you give them ministry. When you give them ministry... The ministry dies. And the reason is, is they're killing it because they're degenerating, not generating. Wow. Now listen to this. Webster's Dictionary says that that word degenerate means to sink, to have sunk below a former or normal condition or character, to deteriorate from a former standard. How many of you know when you deteriorate and degenerate, it means you've gone from the former state to a lesser state? You can't de degenerate something that's never been. If, some, if this plant has never been alive, then you can't cause that plant to degenerate because it was never there. Only because it's alive can that plant degenerate. Can you hear me? So when you're in God's house and you're the body, you're the corporate body, you're supposed to be regenerating. Has everything you touch started coming alive? To ensure that the degeneration doesn't happen, we are going to have to look at something. We have a twofold responsibility. Hebrews 13, 17 says we need to watch and we need to pray. Twofold responsibility. If you're not going to degenerate, you have to watch and you have to pray. Some of you watch thinking watch TV. I'm talking about as watchmen, prayer watching. Can you hear that? Alert, spiritual, seeing discernment, knowing what the spirits of the world are about. Come on. I, I talk with people all the time and I, I hear people say, oh, yeah, well, I hang out, I have sex, I do this, I drink, you know, but I love the Lord. Because they have not had a meeting with God, they've had a religious experience. You have to watch, you have to discern, you have to learn to pray. We say it all the time. It embarrasses me that I have to ask you to come to the prayer room to pray. That's the truth. Growing up in my life as a Christian, I never imagined we'd be in 2016 begging God's people to pray. But it's indicative of where we are as the nation. We forgot how to pray. We forgot the desire to pray. We don't even care about prayer. We pray little prayers and we get in trouble. But God wants to build something, a prayer relationship. Can you hear that? Look at this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. It says, let us consider one another to provoke one another to love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. We know that scripture, but look, saints, we're supposed to be considering one another. That means you're, you're generating life to somebody. And we're supposed to provoke one another. I'm here today to provoke you. 
Hello? To get off of your, 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 your fence and begin to really serve God with all your heart. Can you hear that? To love God and, with, and love God with good works. It's okay to work for the house of God. It's okay to serve in the house of God. Can you hear me? And then it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. We need to be exhorting one another. Come on, get to the house of God. Come on, let's hear the word. Come on, let's go and serve the Lord. Come on, you need to be uh, uh, causing a regenerating process. That's how you get regenerations is by regenerating. Wow. Look at this word when it says in the Hebrew, the word assembly says forsake not the assembly. It means to grasp, to collect together, to go forth and assemble as a man of war, to assemble against the enemy. A con convocation together for a sacred thing, a gathering together, one place, to meet at an appointed place, to come together for a specific purpose at a specific time, a place, like being subpoenaed in court. When that word he says, forsake not the assembling, how many of you know if you got a, uh, what's it called, a subpoena to go to court, how many of you know you'd be going? Hello? And the word that the Hebrew writer Paul used there, he said, this is just like you got a subpoena to come to the house of God. And yet what we do is we blow it off. We say it's not important. I'll come when I feel like it. And that's why the church is the weakest instrument on the earth that carries around the greatest name that's above every name. We call ourselves Christ-like. And what is like Christ in our life? It's quiet today. Are you here? Yeah. Let me land this bird. I, I love what this word says here. 1 Corinthians 5, 4. When you gather together in my spirit, 1 Corinthians 11, 20 through 33, when you come together into one place. 1 Corinthians 14, 23, if therefore the whole church come together into one place. 1 Corinthians 14, 26, how is it then, brethren, where you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, every one of you has ministry. We're supposed to come together and we're supposed to be pollinating one another. We're supposed to be causing a regeneration to happen instead of a degeneration. If I had a baby and I put it on this platform and we all walked away and left it, the baby wouldn't live. And how of you know the church walks right away from its responsibility instead of making sure there's a regenerating process, we're too busy to multiply our own seed. How do you want the church to be around in 25 years. I don't mean this building. I'm talking about the church. That's why I'm coming together with these leaders because we want to determine what do we do to not become like Europe. Hello? There's a concern, saints, around the body of Christ. If you talk to Franklin Graham, Franklin Graham said he's holding prayer meetings because he feels there's no hope for America unless God shows up. Great men and women of God are coming to places of assembling, trying to find out what is going to happen. And we're stuck in a culture that's more interested in taking its own picture than it is laying down its own life. Wow. Here's the last two pieces. Isaiah 4, 1 and 6. Please look there. Come on, turn there. Are you there today? Come on. Isaiah 4, 1 and 6. Isaiah 
4, 1 and 6. And I'm in the new King James, yeah. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name and take away our reproach. That's a powerful scripture. In that day, the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious. How do you say, Lord, we want to be beautiful and glorious. And the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for those of Israel who have escaped. Keep going. And it shall come to pass that he who is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy, everyone who is recorded among the living in Jerusalem. And when the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and purged the blood of Jerusalem from her midst by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, then the Lord will create above every dwelling place of Mount Zion and above her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of the flame by night. For over all the glory there will be a covering. How do you say, Lord, thank you. You're going to put a covering over us. Come on. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place in Mount Zion, upon her assemblies, a cloud, smoke by day, shining a flame by fire by night, and upon all uh, the glory shall be uh, a, 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 a uh, covering. Now look, here's one thing. And it says, in, in, in another translation, it says, it will also be for a place of refuge. How do you know the church is called the city of refuge? That's what we are, saints. We're a city of refuge. And I'm going to close today by reading this portion, and then I'm going to pray with you because I'm going to build something on this. How do you understand here today what I'm telling you? Yes. That you and I are the corporate body. Look at Zephaniah. <laughs> you say it's in your Bible? Yes. Old Testament, Zephaniah chapter 1. This is the landing spot. This is the landing place. Zephaniah chapter 1. You say, Does that, is that even in the Bible? Yeah, yeah, it's there. Now, let me tell you that real quick. If you go to the book of Zephaniah, the book provides an insight into the co concept of corporate gatherings as a place of refuge. The name Zephaniah means Jehovah hides and hidden of Jehovah or Jehovah conceals or protects. So when you see Je Zephaniah, it is the Lord will protect and the Lord uh, will conceal you and hide you. How do you know the church needs to be hidden from the enemy and exposed to the sinner? I'm going to say it again. The church has to be hidden from the enemy but exposed to the sinner. Wow. Look at this. He, he, the concept, Zephaniah's name was prophetic. God wanted to bring the people under the wings and protection and, 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 and coming from the day of judgment and wrath. He could not hide the people unless they brought their lives into order. Look at this. And I'm going to read just a few verses. And the word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amara, the son of Hezekiah, the, in the days of Joash, uh, Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will consume man and beast, and I will consume the birds of the heavens and the fish of the seas and the stumbling blocks along with the wicked. I will cut off man from the face of the land, says the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place and the names of the adulterous priest and the pagan priest. Those who worship the host of heaven on, uh, on the housetops. Those who worship and swear oaths by the Lord, but who also swear by Milcom are one of the gods uh, was Malachi, uh, Molka, uh, Mo Mo I'm sorry, Moloch. One of the gods was Moloch. And those who have turned back from following the Lord and have not sought the Lord nor inquired of him. Be silent in the presence of the Lord God 
For the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has invited his guests. How do you say, Lord, I want to go. I want to go up and I want to go in. And it shall be in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with foreign apparel. And in the same day, I will punish all those who leap over the threshold, who fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And there shall be on that day, says the Lord, the sound of the mournful cry from the fish gate, a wailing from the second quarter, and a loud crashing from the hills. Wail, you inhabitants of Miktash, for all the merchant uh, people are cut down, and all those who handle money are cut off. Now, if I were to continue to read, you'd see something you'd see a continuation through this. And I, I, I'm going to stop because if you go on and you read all the way through verse 16, chapter 3, and you read all the way down, you're going to see something. But I want you to go to uh, chapter 3, verse 14 and, and, and 17 because that's the end of it, and that's where I can leave you today. If you read the rest of that on your own, you're going to see what God wants to do here today and what he wants to do in the church's life. Sing... Oh, daughter of Zion. Come on, worship. Come back into the house of God. Worship, come back to the house of God. <clears throat> shout. You know, it's a shame that worship has to be interrupted because of sin. Worship has to stop in the house of God because of sin. That's a shame. Sing, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Come on. The Lord has taken away your judgments. He has cast out your enemy. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall see disaster no more. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear Zion, let not your hands be weak. And the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Can you hear that? I will gather those who sorrow over the appointed assembly who are among you to whom its reproach is a burden. God says, I'm coming. I want to bring something back into the house. I want to bring back healing and joy. I want to bring back restoration. I want my people to regenerate. I want you to multiply and grow and grow and multiply yourself and the goodness of God. Stand on your feet. Give God some praise here today. Give God some glory here today. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up your hands. Uh, give a shout to the Lord. Uh, Father, we thank you today. We thank you today. For a day is such that we would begin to see a regeneration process. Uh, May the planting of the Lord uh, be fruitful. May the planting of the Lord uh, multiply, multiply. I want you to say, Lord, multiply me. Tell the Lord right now, multiply me, Lord. Make me so alive that I begin to be that vine that produces life. And that I regenerate life every time I show up. I cause those around me to come alive. I cause those near me to come alive because there's a regenerating process. Uh, I'm alive in God. Thank God I'm alive in Him. Uh, and my King has come back to revive me and to restore me and to renew me. Uh, Father, thank you uh, for the day is at hand, God, uh, that you want to bring healing across the nation uh, to the body of Christ. Uh, you want to awaken the body of Christ uh, with power, power, Power and power and power. Father, you want to bring power into the hands of your people. Power in their mouths. Uh, words of life in their mouths. Uh, may they open their mouths uh, and may praise come out of their mouth. Uh, and may the word of the Lord come forth. Uh, may we arise and say we're going to be a generation of multipliers. Uh, for we are in the assembly. We are in the corporate assembly.
we denounce community mindsets. We denounce a community mindset. We're not isolationist. We're not separatist. We're not going to be community organizers. We're going to be those uh, that are of the corporate body of Christ. Uh, and we have in us a seed that's alive. And it's meant to multiply. It's meant to increase. It's meant everywhere we go. If it's in our job that, God, we begin to multiply. Wherever it is, God, uh, everywhere we go and we're in the marketplaces, uh, God, uh, that we'll begin to be those that have a seed in us. Uh, and we're perennials, Lord. We're coming back every year. Every year we're coming back stronger. Every year we're coming back fruitful, more fruitful, more fruitful. And Father, we engraft ourselves in the root of this house. There's a good root in this house. There's a living root in this house and we graft ourselves uh, into that root. Uh, we put ourselves in that root and we say, Lord, uh, I'm gonna be healthy as a born again believer, blood washed uh, and full of the anointing of God. Uh, I'm gonna stay grafted in. Uh, I'm gonna stay connected uh, and hooked up into the vine uh, and hooked up into the branch. Uh, I'm gonna become a living branch, uh, a living branch. Zephaniah said one of the things that came that brought the judgment of God in that scripture in that season was the people had become calloused and careless. Israel, Judah had become, Judah means praise. They had become calloused and casual. And I gave you those five statements of what Rock Church is about, saints. This church is not going to ever be like the church on the corner. It is not our destiny. It is not the markings of God. But what this church is, it's a prayer center. It's an apostolic center. It's a corporate body of men and women that want to grow up and be all they can be for God. Men and women that want to grow up into a full stature, the mature sons and daughters of God. Men and women that want to be really solid citizens of the kingdom of God. Not casual Christians, not fly by night every day, uh, fickled Christians. Uh, we don't want to Christianize anything. We want to be solid citizens of the kingdom of God that opens the door of our heart and lets in the whosoever. We refuse to become an isolationist, a separatist, caught up in all of the gimmicks of the world call up in all the racial divide in the world we are a people a holy people a royal priesthood a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of our God we are a unique set of people that we don't have to apologize. It makes us not better than anybody, but it makes us unique, uh, and it makes us not commonplace. Uh, it makes us a people that have an identity, have a mark. Uh, we have the mark of God on us uh, because God wrote his name over this house, uh, and Jehovah Jireh is his name, and Jehovah Nisi is his name. Uh, he is our banner. <laughs> Jehovah Rophi, he's our healer. God is our deliverance. Uh, he's our bright morning star. He's the lily of the valley. He is the answer, the way, the truth, and the life. He's our king. He's our God. I want you to put your hand out. Close your eyes and put it out and say, Lord, may my life begin to regenerate and I stop say it with me I stop the degeneration of my soul and of my spirit 
I stop, I stop the, degeneration the degeneration process. process. Today, Today I, receive I receive nourishment. I received health. I received My, health. Seed alive. My seed is alive. My seed is germinating. Seed is germinating. And it's going to multiply. It's going to, it's going to bring increase. It's going to, increase. It's going to touch others. It's going to have an effect on others. It's going to begin to be contagious because the seed in me is growing and its vine will run out all over the place to the left and to the right and everywhere I go and everything I touch will begin to multiply and begin to increase because I am regenerating. pray with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, all over this room, heads are bowed. And Lord, I pray this prayer. If there's anybody in this room today, you're here, but you don't really know him. You've really never given your life to him. I'm going to pray for you, and I want everybody to put your hands down while I pray this prayer. Just put it down. Don't have it up in a form of worship for a minute. I'll let you go back to worshiping. But if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I need to get right with God. I need to be alive again. I feel like I've degenerated. I've lost so much. I need that life back in me. If that's you today, I'm going to pray for you. If you're asking Jesus to come back, maybe you fell away, maybe you just degenerated so much you started dying. And I'm here today to tell you, by the power of God, it's time for you to regenerate and come back alive. If you're here today, step your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. Yes. Put your hand up and I'll pray with you. Just put your hand up and say, Pastor, it's me. I need that prayer. I need to regenerate. I need to come back alive. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Hold it up. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. Just say, it's me, Lord. I need to come back. I need to be refreshed. I need to come back alive again. I need to have my seed come alive. I want to become contagious. I don't want to dry up. Yes, sir. I see your hand. I don't want to dry up. I don't want to die. I don't want to just blow away and become a, a dead branch, but I want to be a living branch. I want to be a living branch. Those with your hands up while I'm praying, just come down. Those with your hands up, just come down so we can pray with you. Slip out of your seat and come now. Father, in Jesus' name, that's right, just come out of your seat right now and say, that's me. I'm going to do this thing right. I'm going to get myself back in God. Come on, come on, that's right. Come on, get up. Hook up here. Hook up here. There's, this, there's a man coming. There you go. Go, go. Hook up, hook up, hook up with him. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless them that are here today. I pray that there be a refiring and a regenerating of their spirit man. May they come alive again and realize the enemy had worked a devilish thing to dry them up, to cause them to dry up and lose that spark. Oh, you know who you are, even if you're not at this altar. When you lose that fire, when you lose that spark, you're dying. I don't care who you are. I don't care how long you've known God. But when you lose that spark, when you lose that fire inside of your soul, you've begun to die and you're withering up. But today is God's day for you. Say, Lord, refresh me today. Revive me today. Send fresh fire from on high. Send fresh fire on high and cause the fire to light me up again, Lord. Uh, light my candle, David said. Light my candle afresh, afresh, uh, afresh. Uh, and if you need to make your way to the altar, make your way up front uh, so you can get prayer. Just slip out. Say, Lord, I thank you. I'm refreshing myself. I'm obedient and I want fire back in my belly. I want fire back inside of me. I want that anointed fire back on me again. Uh, come down now. Come down now. And we'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. Come on, some of the elders and pastors. Come on. Get a hold of some of these folks and pray with them that are coming down. They're coming down. You need fire. You need fire. You need fire on high. That's right. Pray for fire.
Pray for fire. Pray for fire. Come on, saints of God. Don't you pray some little silly prayer. You pray anointed prayer. You pray fire. You pray Holy Ghost fire down. Oh, come on, pray in the Spirit. If you're saved today and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit right now, right now. Just pray, 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 pray in the Spirit, pray in the Spirit right now. Just pray, 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 pray. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. There's more coming to the altar. I need some of you altar workers to get down here. Get down here. Some of those of you that are filled with the Holy Ghost, pray with these young people over here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, get a hold of these young girl over here. Get a hold of her. Come on, go on, go on right on the end there. Julie, there you go. All right, let's sing something to the Lord, giving him all the glory. Come on, sing it. Wake within me. You're in my heart forever. Wake within me. Wake within me. You're in my heart forever. Oh, sing to the Lord. Wake within me. Wake within me. You're in my heart forever. Wake within me. Oh, yeah. Wake within me. You're If you came in late today, you can bring your offering to the Lord. I really want you to remember what I said. We came up short last week. I don't want to come up every week short, saints. We can't survive it. You need to say, it's time for me to sacrifice. You know who you are. You know who you are. And you need to sacrifice that gift today so that the house of God can flourish. Come on. Come on. Obey God. Listen to the voice of God. You give that extra. You give that amount, he tells you. And God is your reward. Come on. Here we go. Sing it again. At break of day and hope we rise. We speak your name. We lift our eyes to our hearts. To your being where we walk. There you'll be with fire in our eyes. Our lives alive. Your love untamed. The streets will go forever right. Your glory is breaking through the night. You will never fade away. Your love is here to stay by my side. Wait, wait, wait. 
shining through me every day. Shining through me every day. We're gonna take it back. Say wake within me. Here wake. we go, say wake. You wake. wake. 